I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today because for the last three months, I've been working on an experiment to try and answer the question of whether battery break-in really makes a difference or not. And I finally finished, and I finally got the results, and you're going to learn about what they are. In November of last year, I reached out to my contact at Banggood and asked if they would be willing to provide me with some batteries to do a long-term test. The kind of testing that I don't normally get to do. You know that I test batteries, right? Obviously you do if you watch this channel. But I just test the batteries like one cycle, new out of the box. I can tell you their performance. And I can't test their longevity. And that really bothered me. I wanted to try and see how some of these batteries held up. And I picked the Infinity batteries. Uh, I picked the Infinity batteries because they performed pretty well in my testing. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, anybody anywhere in the world can buy the Infinity batteries from Banggood. Well, it's, there's probably some places we don't ship. But I guess what I'm getting at is they're widely available. Uh, they're, they're pretty much always in stock not always, but pretty much always in stock. They're reasonably priced. And, you know, there may be better batteries out there for the money. But as far as just a sort of a general universal choice of what's a decent battery that you could probably buy right now and won't let you down, I thought it was a good choice. So I decided to do the long-term testing on them. And I figured as long as I was going to do the long-term testing, let's also test whether battery break-in makes a difference. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today. What I did was this. I got 10 batteries. Five of the 1300 milliamp hour 90C race spec batteries and five of the 1500 milliamp hour 70C batteries. Uh, and bo both of those are graphene. And I ran half of them through a break in cycle and half of them I did not break in. Then I did a 60 amp discharge test, my standard battery testing, and I recorded the results. And then for the next three months, I flew the batteries. Now, I didn't do anything to control for the way that I discharged the batteries, other than the fact that there's a certain way that I tend to fly. Uh, I didn't do any drag race testing or top speed testing with them. I just used them how I normally use my batteries. I was careful to never over discharge them. I always finish my pa packs around, say, 3.78 to 3.8 volts per cell. Uh, I never, never discharged any of them below that. Uh, and, and they made sure that they all went through the exact same same number of cycles. And I hope that means that any differences, slight differences maybe in the way that some of them were used will average out in the end. I hope that the result, you'll, you'll agree that the results are still interesting and valid, despite the fact that I didn't like just stick them on a computer and discharge them at a constant rate and just see what the result was. That would be a more rigorous test, but it would be a really freaking boring test and I would just want to blow my brains out. So that's, that's not what I did. Then at the end of 30 cycles, I did the test again, the discharge test again, and I compared the results. And now let's look at the results. For the break-in, what I did was I charged the batteries to 4.2 volts per cell, and I discharged them to 3.5 volts per cell at a rate of 1 amp. So that's less than a 1C rate for all of these batteries. And I did that five times. And each time I recorded the number of milliamp hours that the battery put out during the discharge phase. And the reason I did this is that some have suggested that during break-in, the battery's capacity increases. The battery comes up to full capacity. Something happens internally. I don't know. So I wanted to test that hypothesis. And if we look at these numbers, we can see essentially there is no increase in capacity between cycle number one and cycle number five for any of these batteries. And you can just pause the video now and you can take a look and convince yourself that that's true. So I would say that the, the claim that the battery's capacity changes during break-in, at, at least according to my break-in protocol, that does not seem to be true. The next thing that I did after break-in was I did my standard 60 amp discharge test. Now bear in mind that these batteries have never been on a copter. Half of them have been broken in, half of them have simply been charged up from storage as they were delivered by the postal service. Let me take a second to familiarize you with the metrics I'm using to measure the battery's performance, uh, just in case you're not familiar. Milliamp hour percent refers to the percent of the battery's rated capacity that it delivered during this test protocol. And it may surprise you to see that this battery only delivered 62% of its rated capacity. But bear in mind that's because we're discharging at such a high rate. 60 amps is a lot to ask of most of these batteries, despite the fact that they have a, you know, 80C, 90C, some ridiculous C rating. That's nonsense. Forget about it. My experience is that a battery that delivers between about 60 and 70% of its rated capacity uh, at 60 amps discharge 
that's a perfectly fine number. Less than about 60% is a little bit questionable. It's maybe bad performance. More than about 70% makes me wonder whether the battery's capacity is actually accurately rated. Maybe it's really a 1400 or 1500 milliamp hour being under labeled so it looks better than the competition. So these numbers are absolutely right in the middle of the road. There's nothing wrong with this 60% number here. Watt hours refers to the amount of power that the battery delivered. Watts equals volts times amps. Higher voltage will have your motor spinning faster. More amps will have your motor spinning faster. This is the ultimate metric of the battery's ability to deliver power to the motors. So more is better. The next thing that I did was I discharged the batteries at 60 amps according to my normal test protocol. Uh, and here are the results. For milliamp hour percent, more is better. And the 1300s, the not broken in batteries, did slightly better. For watt hours, more is better. The not broken in batteries did slightly better. For temperature, less is better. A uh, cooler battery is generally going to mean that the internal resistance is lower and going to have less voltage sag. That's not, temperature is the one of these metrics that's probably the most questionable. And the reason for that is that when I do the testing, I let the battery sag to 14 volts and then I, I stop the test and let it recover. And a battery that recovers slower is going to have more time to cool down. So it, it, take the temperature with a little bit of a grain of salt. But if the, if the temperature is radically high, then the battery's probably not great. Uh, but a few degrees of difference in the temperature, maybe we shouldn't read too much into. Anyway, the temperature was the same between the broken in and not broken in 1300s. For number of bursts, fewer is better. Fewer bursts means that the battery discharged without with less sag. The ideal scenario would be a single burst. The battery held 60 amps without going below 14 volts until it discharged its full capacity, right? So the fewer bursts, the better. And the broken in batteries did slightly better here. And then for longest burst, longer is better. We want the battery to hold voltage and discharge amps for a longer period of time without sagging and the broken in batteries did slightly better. If we look at the 1500 milliamp hour batteries, we can see broken in were slightly better for milliamp hour percent, slightly better for watt hours, uh, slightly worse, or no, sorry, slightly better for temperature, slightly better for bursts, and slightly better for longest bursts. So with the 1500s, it looks like the broken in ones did just slightly better across the board. With the 1300s, uh, well, the not broken in ones did slightly better in some metrics and slightly worse in others. Overall, though, I'm not sure how easily we could call a winner here because the numbers, even when they're better in some cases, they're so close that I'm not sure whether it just falls within the margin of error of the experiment. At the end of the day, you got a human who's deciding when to throw the switch and when to cut, and there's going to be some error there. For the 1500 milliamp hour batteries, the broken in ones delivered slightly more milliamp hours slightly more watt hours. They actually ran hotter. And again, I'm not so sure how much we should read into the temperature because a battery that is sagging more gets more time to rest and cool down. So maybe we should just throw the temperature out of this test right now. They had the same number of bursts and they had a slightly longer longest burst. So in this case, it certainly looks like there is a, a consistent but small margin for the broken in batteries. They seem to be performing slightly better across the board. And that result really surprised me. And to be completely honest with you, annoyed me a little bit. I really was hoping that these results would be that there was no difference. And I could say, you guys, break in is, forget it. It's nonsense, it's a myth, just forget it. And that's what I personally believe. If any scientist tells you that they're going into an experiment completely objective with no preconceived notion about the results, well, they're probably lying. The best, the best you can do is be aware of your biases and try and design an experiment that prevents your biases from affecting the results and then be honest with yourself about what the results are. And if I'm completely honest with myself, I have to admit that the broken in batteries are consistently performing just a little bit better on almost every metric. It wasn't the case at the at when they were brand new, but it seems like after 30 cycles, a small difference has come out. And uh, this test obviously has lots of flaws, right? Number one, the differences are so small that maybe they're within the margin of error, uh, but they're within the margin of error slightly on the positive side. So, hmm, isn't that interesting? Uh, and, and we certainly could say that my test protocol, the fact that I discharged the batteries in an uncontrolled way may have influenced the results. We can acknowledge that. But 
these results are interesting enough that maybe it's worth doing more testing. And I have to say that my tune is going to change regarding breaking in. If I didn't acknowledge the evidence and change my tune, I wouldn't be an ethical scientist in as much as I am a scientist, which, you know, haha, right? Uh, yeah, my, my official message about breaking in going forward is going to be this. If you decide to break in your batteries, maybe, maybe there's a benefit. Uh, whereas before I would have said, there's no benefit. Feel free to break them in if you want to. It's not hurting anything, but there's no benefit. Now, maybe there is a benefit. However, at this point at least, it seems like if there is a benefit, it's a relatively small benefit. Uh, two or three percent, maybe even as little as one percent more milliamp hours after 30 cycles. Uh, slightly more, maybe 0.2 or 0.3 more watt hours. It's not a massive difference. Uh, and if you don't notice the difference, if you don't want to break them in, I don't think you're going to notice the difference. But if you do break them in, if you care about every little edge, I no longer think that you're just being silly and wasting your time. So all you guys who are proponents of breaking in, you are welcome to think, ha ha, he finally proved us right. And all you guys out there who think breaking in is silly, you are also welcome to think, ha ha, he proved us right. Because after all, if the difference is only a couple percent, you see, everybody can be happy. You can both think you're right. Okay. And that is going to do it for this video. I do want to say thank you, uh, thank you to uh, thank you to Banggood for giving me these batteries and then letting me just keep them for three months on a promise that eventually something interesting would come of it. Uh, I have links to the batteries down in the video description. If you decide to buy them and use those links, it, it'll help me out. They're not affiliate links, but they're 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 tracking links that Banggood will use to know that you came from my video, and then Banggood will be happy that they gave me these batteries. Uh, thanks, thanks to the viewers, of course, and thanks to my patrons. Uh, all you guys make it possible for me to do this kind of long-term testing and put the kind of time and effort into this uh, that this kind of thing takes. And I'm, I'm really excited to be able to produce what I think is interesting and new science, new results, new research that advances the knowledge of this hobby. I know some of you are saying, new, new research? What are you talking about? Stinger Swarm has been doing this exact same thing for months. I know, I, uh, I promise you I didn't copy his idea. We both had the same idea at roughly the same time. Uh, and the difference is he's, he's already been posting about it, and I, I held back until I had the research. But anyway, whatever. So two people did the same research. Big deal. Good, good for you. Go watch his videos on Break In and see what he has to say as well. Anyway, thank you for watching, and as always, happy flying.